<laughs> and now we have Bruce Labans. Laban. Uh, Laban, sorry. <laughs> Apparently from Google, talking about puzzles. <laughs> Hi. So, um, some of you probably have heard of the Microsoft Puzzle Hunt. Uh, it's an all-day puzzle, uh, all-weekend puzzle event that I founded in 1999. And uh, okay. So, one of the things about that kind of event is that it's all done by amateurs, and you always need new people. So, I thought I'd teach you guys how to write puzzles. So first of all, writing puzzles is a partnership. A lot of people think that it's a contest, that if you write a really good puzzle, it'll be hard to solve. Well, actually, there's different components. Puzzles can be solvable, they can be constructible, and they can be fun. And there's some tension between these things. It's easy to write a puzzle that's easy to construct, easy to solve, but isn't any fun, because it's just the answer, for example. So when you're writing a puzzle, what you have to do is you have to think like you're going to solve the puzzle. You have to know your problem space. Now, if you want to start solving a puzzle, start creating puzzles, start by solving them. And when you solve a puzzle, you'll realize that there's nothing obvious. You think, oh, it's so obvious that uh, this puzzle is full of the names of Beanie Babies. Well, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, that might have been obvious. It's not obvious today. So test solving is totally essential when you create a puzzle. And you don't want to finish the puzzle before you test solve any part of it. You can test solve small parts. So when you solve a puzzle, you go through a sequence of things. You don't just, aha, there's the answer. You go through a path. So you want to understand the path that the person is going to go through as they solve the puzzle. You want to give them hooks. You want to make sure that there's something in there that hints at the solution. If you have to give them hints after you finish the puzzle, after they've spent an hour working on the puzzle, that's no good. So you want to give them hints inside the puzzle. You want to avoid red herrings. Sometimes red herrings can be sort of fun. But a puzzle that you spend a long time on thinking that it's you know a word search when it's really a cryptogram could be pretty hard. And. Uh, Finally, don't let them get stuck. Not actually finally, but uh, it's easy to make a lot of progress on a puzzle. You have a crossword puzzle, and you're all done except for three squares, or a jigsaw puzzle where you can't fit the last piece in. That can be really fr frustrating. So now for something different. UI. Big crowd here. Uh, building computer software, UI, is a lot like building puzzles. So let's, let's walk through it. And this is actually a cheap way to do a presentation. Just use the same slides twice. <laughs> so building UI is a partnership between the developer and the user. You're not trying to trick them. You'll never find my feature. Right? I'm sure we've all used software like that. <laughs> you have usability, easy to develop, and features. Now, you can add new features. It makes it harder to use. You can make it easier to use by more work as developing the software. And you can't really do all three at the same time. You need to think like the user. You need to say, how is the user going to want to use the software? What features are they going to want? And how are they going to go through it? So the next slide says, you have to understand, oops, nope, sorry, that's the slide after this. Nothing is obvious. Now in puzzles, what he said, well, they're not going to see it's all names of Beanie Babies. When you put your feature in, you said, of course they'll know that they can click on that thing that doesn't look like a button. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to know how they're going to go through the software. They're going to go through a path. Most software isn't just a one button thing. It's a sequence of steps that they're going to go through. First thing they're going to do is they're going to come up to your webmail program, they're going to log in. It'd be nice to have something there that looks like a button that says log in. And there was an actual web application that didn't have one of these, which is what made me think of that example. Um, you want to give them hooks. Well, just like in the puzzle, you want to give them hints. Well, you want to put hints in your UI that says, hey, here's where you'll find more features. But maybe not list all the features on the first page. You want to avoid red herrings. Anybody ever try and find a feature in the program right where you thought it would belong? It should be under the file menu because it has to do with files, but no, it's under the extra menu, or the tools menu, or the special menu. <laughs> Don't let them get stuck. It's very easy to have a wizard or a process that you go through. You do the first step, second step, third step, you get to the last step, and okay, where's the finish button? What am I supposed to do now? There's no buttons to get out of this page. What you're supposed to do is start over, or something like that. Finally, if you want to be a great UI developer, you should learn to write puzzles. 
<laughs> well, not really. But um, so, what does help wanted mean? Well, I'm always looking to create new puzzle events. If you'd like to learn how to create puzzles, best way to learn something is by doing. Uh, contact me. My information's there, and let me know if you want to uh, learn more.